Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and especially drone fans, the Mavic 2 just came out, and today we'll test the Mavic 2 Pro. And not only will we test this one, we'll compare it with the Mavic 1 Pro and see how better the Mavic 2 is. In this video I will talk about the differences between the Mavic 1 Pro and the Mavic 2 Pro. Mostly talking about the image quality both in the video mode and in the uh, photo mode because the Mavic 2 Pro has a much bigger sensor. As I said before, the Mavic 2 Pro has a much bigger sensor, it's one inch in diameter and that means, in theory at least, that the image quality is much better. Why? Because pixels are bigger, that means less noise and a higher dynamic range. Hopefully, let's find out. One thing that's immediately apparent when you use the new Mavic 2 Pro is that the image on your phone screen is much sharper because the Mavic 2 sends and the remote controller receives a full HD 1080p signal, whereas the old Mavic 1 only received a 720p signal. It's all right because it's not a final image, but on the Mavic 1, what you, whatever you were seeing always looked a little bit blurry, whereas now it's more crisp. That's just better. Let's talk about quality and bit rates and compression for a second. So the Mavic 1 Pro had an H.264 compression with uh, 60 megabits per second. That is a certain amount. The Mavic 2 Pro use a different codec called H265 and has a compression um, of 100 megabits per second. That is almost double, but some people say, and therefore they are all right, that the H265 format gets about twice the quality with the same bitrate. So you could say that the Mavic uh, 2 has 200 megabits per second equivalent um, in H264. Compression. Does it make sense? One thing I noticed when flying is that, at least on the screen, even in the log mode, the dynamic hasn't really changed. So you still have the problem where the sky is nice and blue and the trees are black, or the sky is white and the trees are nice and green, and so on. That is, oh, that is a dead end, but it's also problem when flying. It might be fine on a computer because the files are supposedly really nice, but at least when flying I can't see everything. Since the wind is picking up, I think we'll send both drones up and see which one is more stable. One drone, the Mavic 1, had a tendency to move around a bit more and especially to go up for some reason. Maybe it thought there's less wind up there. I don't know which drone ever thought that. They should learn from their experiences. This one didn't and had a lot of experiences with a lot of wind. And there's one thing that really starts to annoy me is that when you turn the little wheel on the remote control on the top uh, right, you change the aperture uh, and that is quite slow. It feels slow and it is slow. It takes some time and I don't necessarily want to change uh, the aperture. I want to change the time. For example, if I'm turning the other way around, returning back, looking down or whatever, I need to change the exposure to have a quick look or just to adjust my settings. And for the moment, I have to go to the menu. That's not great. You guys know that the 4K signal only is about 8 megapixels, right? The Mavic 2 camera has 20 megapixels. That means that you can zoom in and still have a full 4K pixel readout without any quality loss. And then there's no interpolation to make the image bigger. It's, you know, each pixel is an actual pixel. And that is cool. That means you can zoom in almost like an optical zoom without loss and get interesting perspectives and effects. That's cool. Of course, oversampling, which is 
essentially taking more information from the 20 megapixels and then reducing them down to whatever you need, HD, 4K and so on, is always better, right? A lot of information, make the image smaller, everything looks better, you get rid of a bit of noise, the details get sharper and so on. If you have a direct readout, pixel by pixel, you can't do that. But given that the sensor is reasonably big, I expect good quality from it. All right, I've talked enough. It's really time to go home now. And I'm hungry as well. A few days have passed, I've done a few more tests and flights and well, what I can say is the honeymoon phase is over. There are just a few things where I wonder like what the hell happened here? Why? Don't get me wrong, the Mavic 2 is all in all still a great drone but there are a few things I need to show you. Did you see how um, DJI said, oh, we have a Hasselblad with uncompromising image quality, with iconic image quality? Well, let's see about that, shall we? So first, in the list of things that have gone wrong is this. Have a look at this clip. The horizon, uh-oh. It's a bit bendy. Uh-oh, it gets worse. Holy moly. What was that? Looks like a GoPro, not a Hasselblad. It gets weirder. If you look at the footage that comes, that arrives at the remote control, you see this. The horizon is nice and straight. If you compare both, you can see what's going on here. So it clearly looks like there is some image processing going on in, in the Mavic, maybe in the remote, but I guess in the Mavic, that gets sent out to the remote. That's what you see, you think everything's fine, you go home and everything's bent. I also noticed that this only happens in the log modes, not in the standard mode. So um, that means, to me at least, that some DJI can do something about it. I hope that in one of the next firmware updates or software updates or whatever, they will fix this. Um, obviously, the image quality will get lower because you essentially bend the pixels around. But since there's 20 megapixels uh, and we only need, again, uh, 8 megapixels for 4K video, I think we should be fine here with the quality. There's enough uh, oversampling to, 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 to get it right. So please, DJI, fix that. The next thing I want to talk about is the sharpness. I thought, okay, Hasselblad, new bigger sensor, it will be amazing. Really? Look at that, this is a 4K clip. And if I zoom all the way in, I see nothing that is really sharp. I focused on the trees, okay? Just to be sure, that this several times. I wondered if I focused correctly. This is a 5. f5.6. I focused on the trees and nothing really is sharp. That's a bit disappointing. I thought, well, maybe it is much better than the Mavic 1. So let's see about that. So this, what you can see is a 100% view of the Mavic 1. You see it's sharp, right? You see some over sharpening, the white line around the details. Um, you also see lots of details everywhere. It looks like blotches of solid color. Look at this tree here. Again, it looks like you only have a few colors in there. Let's look at the Mavic uh, 2. This looks much better. It is a bit blurry. Again, this is f5.6. Um, the tree is not really sharp. It's maybe to be expected because I focused uh, on the tiles, but you see much more different shades of color. It's a bit of sharpening afterwards um, and everything should be fine. Of note here are the much more natural colors of the Mavic 2. Um, DJI and Hasselblad say that they have a nice color science, a natural color science, and I would tend to agree that it's, it's quite nice, especially compared to the Mavic 1, which frankly was um, not so nice. Everything was a bit purple. I always thought it's because of my ND filters. I always find it hard to grade to remove the, the, the purple tinge that was in there. Um, I guess now I know why. And it's not the ND filters, so not only the ND filters. Now, if you want to recover the highlights in the image, 
um, you will see that the Mavic 2 Pro is way better than the Mavic 1. The Mavic 1, um, well, just have a look. This is the Mavic 1 again. Let's zoom in. I lowered the, the, the highlights, right? So, well, let's go to 200% even. Can you see how this artifact, um, it looks again like the sky has three shades of some sort of gray, maybe. Let's look at the Mavic 2. Oh yeah, much more gradation. That looks a million times better. We have, well, many shades of gray here. The Mavic 2 is clearly a winner. It is a bit less sharp, but then it has essentially no artifacts, right? So the Mavic 1 was just looked sharp. It was pixel blotchy and then and, and, uh, over sharpened. And, and then it looks like there was only five colors for the whole image. Mavic 2 Pro is way better here. So well done, that is cool. That's what we want. You know that the Mavic 2 has a variable aperture, right? From 2.8 to f11, many different steps in between. I tested um, one stop um, intervals and let's have a look at them. So you see some vignetting at f2.8. That is, I guess, to be expected. Let's go see f4. Okay, still some vignetting. 5.6, so more vignetting. Surely by F8 it's gone. F8, yeah, still some there. F11, uh, okay, still. If you look closer, you will see that from one step to the other, the vignetting comes and goes. It's not really clear. So usually at, say for example, F2.8, you have the strongest vignetting, it's reduced by F4, by 5.6 is virtually gone, by F8 it is gone, by 11 it stays gone. Here it is there all the time and it's not, following a, any regular pattern where it just tapers off. It's just there all the time and comes and goes. That is really weird. Um, I have to say that this is in the photo mode, right? In the video mode it is corrected by the software, so everything is just nice and flat and gray. Um, but yeah, in the photo mode it just stays there and you can correct that. Um, sometimes it's actually nice to have it in the picture. Um, to draw attention to the center of the image or roughly the center. Problem is you can't really control it and I would have loved to see it go, to see it disappear, but um, it stays. On to the next point. The differences in image quality depending on the aperture. Usually when you close down the aperture you remove vignetting, but you improve the sharpness, right? From 2.8 to 5.6 for example, the image should get noticeably sharper and then when you close even more it should get blurry again. Let's see if that happens and let's compare it with the f2 um, aperture from the Mavic 1. Okay, let's zoom in. Ugh. Right. Um, again, you see the trees have like five colors. It looks kind of sharp, but it's just a horrible mess. Everything's over sharpened. You see white artifacts around stuff. You see trees with like two colors. This is um, disgusting. Let's look at the Mavic 2 Pro. Aha! S some blurriness in the trees. Let's go to F4. That is one stop closed. Right. Seems to be a bit better, maybe. So there's no, no over sharpening, no white line around edges. So that's cool. F5.6. Hard to say. Let's go back to F4. Hmm. Well, let's just say it's similar. F8 starts to get blurry again, I would say. Yeah, that is more blurry. F11, ooh, ooh, F11 even worse. Okay, well bear in mind that is a downsampled image essentially from 20 megapixels down to 4K, which is eight megapixels. So plenty of room to um, get the image a bit sharper again. This does not seem to happen. That means that F11 and F8 really uh, degrade your image quality. That is true as well, and I checked that in the photo mode. The quality noticeably drops. It is um, much more blurry. So my advice here is to essentially shoot at F5.6, 
stay there. Unless it gets dark, you can go to f4, maybe 2.8. If you shoot in 1080p, you can probably still film at f8 um, because you won't see the difference. But in 4K, you see it. Um, it starts to get really noticeable at f, starting from f8 and f11. If you can avoid it, please. There's no benefit really to it if you film landscapes anyway. Everything will be more or less in the focus zone, so there's no point. Stick at 5.6, f5.6. Okay, let's finish on a high note. Um, there was a lot of negative aspects. Some of them will be hopefully corrected. I'm talking about vignetting correction maybe, and especially the distortion correction. Please, please, DJ, correct that. Otherwise, really, the camera is useless because we pan when filming landscapes all the time. Um, and you don't want the horizon to be bent or even buildings to look like a GoPro strapped to, to a bird or something. No, 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 we don't want that. So, what is really nice is the 10-bit recordings, right? So you have way more room to play with the exposure um, and correct it and get nice colors out of it and so on. So let's see a few examples uh, of ungraded log footage versus reasonably graded, natural-looking uh, imaging. There's this little clip. Okay, and let's see, see how the sky is flat and, and everything's flat and not really interesting. Let's see how it could look like graded. Nice. Let's go to 100%. There's nothing really blowing out or artifactual in the sky. Same really here. It's just a bit blurry like before, but hey, I would say it looked good. Next, let's see another video. So this is in log mode again. You see everything is a bit flat, boring. The sky is almost white. Let's grade it. Boom. Look at that sky. It's blue. We're happy. Really good. Last example, sunset filming against uh, the sun. That is really, really hard. Usually everything is dark and black in the foreground. The sun overpowers everything. It's really hard to find good settings because something will be white. So you just have to decide what will be. So in this case, I exposed the image so that, well, obviously the sun uh, is, is, is overblown and then a little bit around and the rest of the sky was not overexposed. So let's see how that grades. You have that nice move here. And if you grade it, boom. That's a bit extreme, I have to say. But it's just to show what is possible, right? And let's go see the sun in more detail. You have quite a nice transition from white to color or to non-white. That is quite pleasant to the eye and not at all what you could see in the Mavic 1 where usually you would have like a hard edge somewhere here and it would just look terrible. So my conclusion, if you have the Mavic 1 and you're wondering if you should get the Mavic 2, well, get the Mavic 2 if you have the money. If you're not so sure, get the Mavic 2 if you do a lot of work on the computer anyway, if you're comfortable or want to get comfortable with shooting in log mode and doing some heavy post-processing afterwards. If you don't, if you film in, you know, in standard mode and don't do much anyway, take photos in JPEG and whatnot, I guess, and especially if you stay in 1080p, stay with the Mavic 1, why not? That is all right. I mean, I've seen very good videos on YouTube from the Mavic 1. It's just, it's just that you shouldn't zoom in. But yeah, that rounds up uh, my comparison and analysis of the image quality of the Mavic 2 Pro versus the Mavic 1. I hope you liked it. And if you do, please stick around, like the video, that helps me. Subscribe to the channel, maybe. There's a lot of new stuff coming up. Um, there is a photo and video trip to Norway. There is a photo and video trip to Iceland. There were some vacations in Greece with some nice summary footage. And there will be tutorials, free LUTs and all that goodness. In the meantime, enjoy the day, enjoy the weather, hopefully, and enjoy flying. See ya!